The Evil Dead franchise has always been some of the best classic horror that has ever existed. They managed to combine so many different elements of gore, of glorious jokes, and honestly, they're very, very groovy. But the games that have been based on Evil Dead have mostly sucked. I've played everything, even touching the Evil Dead universe, but this is the first time where it feels like the game developers cared. Evil Dead the game is very, very good. It has some problems, which we are going to talk about, but this is the first one where I feel like this was created by the fans, which makes me very, very happy. But let's get into it. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Now please, if you could do me a big favor, give this video a like. If this video happens to get 5,000 likes, I am going to be giving away a copy of Evil Dead the Game over on my Twitter account. Also, subscribe. Alright, so what is this game? What we have here today is an asymmetrical multiplayer experience. There are four survivors and there's one demon. Now, if you're playing as the survivors, the goal is to try and shut some sort of demonic portal that has appeared in these woods. Now, to do that the game is very randomized it's a series of matches now whenever you go into this there are a bunch of landmarks you're going to recognize from the movies downed planes the classic cabin a lot of the stuff that you've probably seen throughout the television show and the old trilogy of movies but while doing this the things inside of these landmarks are always a little bit different now you and the other survivors have to try and scrounge rummaging through drawers checking in top of like little hidden cabinets and stuff and when you do that you're going to find different supplies. These can be weapons, which are everything from things you're going to recognize like the boomstick, chainsaws, but also stuff just like knives and handguns and pickaxes and stuff like that. Now you're going to need these a lot because the game really likes to flood you with deadites. There are undead everywhere. Now these guys, the typical random minions are relatively weak. You can take these guys down relatively quick with just a couple fast blows or with one finisher attack, but what you need to worry about more than anything else is staying hidden. These random deadites, they're not a problem, but if the demon manages to track you down, they're going to kill you fast. But what's the objective here? Like, okay, you're trying to shut a portal to hell. Well, while you're scrounging and trying to find these supplies, you're also going to find pieces of a map. Now, the entire game is broken down into this series of phases. Every single match starts out trying to find three random pieces of a map. Once you have the map, it'll tell you where this ancient dagger is, and then another map that you have to combine together. Doing all of that reveals the final portal. Now, this sounds pretty easy, and if you have a very good team, matches can sometimes be 12 minutes. Like, that's very, very, very swift. An average match is going to typically be about 25 minutes. But the problem is that during the course of every single one of these times, there is a tough element of increasing difficulty. The demon you're going against, which, reminder, is another player, is always getting a little bit stronger. Now, how does the demon work? This is an important aspect of it. Because the demon is played by a separate person, they have the ability to create these deadites, they can make different minions, they can actually really screw over your day quite a bit, but they can also possess you. This has always been a very goofy aspect of the Evil Dead series, but if you get scared enough, there is a horror meter, your mind is weakened, and they can straight up possess you and force you to attack your friends. Now, playing as the demon is really kind of tough. It's tough in a fun way, but the way this works is that you're like this disembodied ghost that's floating around the map and picking up these little red crystals, which are essentially your mana bar. Getting enough energy, you can summon more and more minions. You can summon up elite guys to try and attack them, and as you level up, you can even start to make big bosses from the movies themselves. What really impressed me most about Evil Dead the game is that it is very shockingly well balanced. After playing almost 20 hours of this, 10 hours of the beta on Xbox and 10 hours of it here on the PlayStation 5 because I got a copy yesterday, the game is very, very straight down the middle made. And what I mean by that is that after playing so many freaking matches of this, 50% of the time the survivors win and 50% of the time the demon wins. And that just shows how tightly made this is. But this is very heavily based on teamwork more than anything else. If you have somebody that's trying to go by themselves, if you have somebody that's just scrounging around on the other side of the map, the demon can find them, they can target them, and they can kill them very, very quick. Trust me, I've been the demon. If you get away from your friends, I'm gonna eat your stupid face. 
But what makes this incredibly fun is the fact that it's, it's nice that it has this very good tight control system. So while you're playing it, you do have light attacks and strong attacks, but shooting your gun is a double-edged sword. Whenever you fire your gun, there is very, very, very limited ammo in this game. When you shoot, it has to be a good shot. Now, it can actually kill a lot of these minions very, very quickly, especially if you have a higher level gun. So while you're rummaging around, you're going to find different tiers of weapons in this because there is like typical white common items there's blue stuff that's a little bit more rare and then there's epic and legendary which are uh, purple items and orange items if you pick these up these are essentially much 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 stronger weaponry but they're also incredibly rare if you find a legendary weapon it feels like a legendary weapon i feel like so many of these games these days they try and just bombard you with the most ridiculously strong power-ups and you can just steamroll people and i hate that i like that when i found a good item in this game it was like holy heck i found a great item but the downside is that you don't always do that if you happen to be incredibly unlucky and get spawned into a part of the map that has very little loot in it i've had times where the first eight minutes of a match I could not find a weapon now this may be a glitch but I've had times where I've been running around I'm trying to find stuff I'm scrounging I'm checking every freaking house and I can't find even a freaking pocket knife to defend myself now you can do melee you can just punch people to death but of course the demon is going to target me first if they realize that I can't properly fight back it sucks to get completely swarmed like the randomness of this game is cool, but that does also bring me to the other problem I have with this, which is that I'm sure you've noticed by now, as far as I can tell, there is only this one map. It's just this spot in the woods. Well, there's technically two maps. It's different spots of the same woods, so you have slightly different landmarks, but they're identical when it comes to just ecosystem. It's just miles and miles and miles of pitch black forest. Now, my problem with this is that I like the Evil Dead trilogy of movies a lot, and I feel like there's so much lost potential. They could have given us, like, give us the gigantic fort, give us, I don't know, put us in some sort of different medieval settings. Put us in S-Mart. I would love to walk around a cheesy knockoff of Walmart trying to actually shop the hardware aisle and shoot the deadites. Instead, you go through this one piece of forest again and again and again. Also, there is that problem of that it feels like this game, because it is online only, I'm nervous about the population of it. This is an internet forced game. You cannot play it offline. You can play it with bots, but you have to connect to the server. I'm nervous because even as it stands now, this game is fun, but it's certainly lacking content in a way because it is just this map. It's just a couple heroes. It's just these three different styles of demon. I'm a little bit nervous that what happens when people start quitting i mean let's just face facts people burn out to video games incredibly quick how many thousands of people are going to even be playing this game in a month like that's kind of my concern is that if you're an evil dead fan right now i do think you have to play this game at launch while the servers are populated while things are very popping it's cool that there's stuff that's playable that's crazy it's fun to learn this game with everybody but i'm a little bit concerned that in a couple weeks this game is going to be completely dead additionally as it currently exists, there are tons of server error issues. I've been kicked out of matches because the lobby crashed. I've been kicked out of matches because somebody quit and it shut everything down. I've been disconnected. Like, I've tested it. You cannot play this without an internet connection. And if the servers have any sort of problems, like yesterday, some of the servers just shut off for a bit before launch. And when that happened the game just deactivates, which to me kind of sucks. Now, one of the main questions I've seen people asking is, does this have crossplay? Yes, it does. Xbox can play with PC, who can play with PlayStation. Everybody is just in one giant pit, which means that the player base that currently exists is going to be around for a while. Like, it's not like you're just trying to play with one little group. It is a pretty big pool of players currently. Additionally, I did see a different bunch of questions about if this has any real single player content. Uh, technically it does, but it doesn't really feel that great. So there are these things that are called missions. They're essentially these tiny slices of scenes that existed inside the movie itself, trying to find Linda or your girl, your girlfriend that got decapitated, trying to go to big landmarks that existed in the films. But when you do it, there's not really any voice acting. There's not any cut scenes. It'll just show like these title cards that'll say the text. Obviously, this was made very last minute. To even say that these are missions is a bit of a stretch. 
Now you do have to do them if you want to try and unlock all the characters. Now the last thing I do want to talk about is the different styles of heroes we have. So for the demons, the demons have three different style archetypes. There's the warlords who attack very directly, the necromancers which make huge legions of the undead, and then the possessors or the puppeteers who are the people that jump into your body and mess you up. Whereas with the heroes, there's four main types of hero. There's the leaders, the warriors, the hunters, and the support. Now, what you gotta essentially know is that everybody has a built-in super ability. Some of them can heal others, somebody can consume your fear, some people can get infinite ammo, some people can get healed by dealing damage. I actually really, really like this because it's nice that there is these different styles of character. Like playing the different heroes feels different. And that to me is very fun. Learning the different people, trying to figure out the different versions of Ash because Ash has been through a lot. So the different versions of him have very different specialities. I loved just kind of experiencing and unlocking these different characters and really trying to be good at them. Mastering a particular hero and trying to figure out all the little tiny subtleties of their specific playtype is cool, but this does bring me to the upgrade system. So there are two different styles of upgrade in this that are very, very separate. So inside of matches, there are these random supply crates. Whenever you open these up, they'll give you a random weapon, which is great, and also these tiny upgrade sodas. Now, drinking one of these, it basically gives you temporary bonuses for the rest of this match. It makes it where you can permanently upgrade your like your health, your stamina, your resistance to fear, or just your damage of melee or guns. Now this is cool because it really lets you kind of figure out how you want to play that particular match. If you happen to find a legendary shotgun right at the very start, then you're probably going to be stacking points specifically into ranged damage, which can really amp up. There really is a nice power scaling that these things is they're all based on percentiles. It's cool that you can have those times where I find a big old heavy freaking chainsaw and I start putting points into melee and I am literally one-shotting enemies. It's fun that this has that ability to just kind of amplify as long as you are playing smart. But then there's also the permanent upgrades. So whichever characters you're playing as, that hero slowly gets advanced through a skill tree. You get essentially talent points and whenever you want you can go here to the collection menu and put in more permanent bonus buffs, increasing their stamina, run speed, their attack damage, their finishers, or making it so that elites die faster. It's nice that it has this progression system, but I do feel like this is only going to get people engaged for so long. I, I do feel like this game does sort of lack content in a way, because this is just that one map, it's just like 13 heroes, it's just those three different demons, and then once you've experienced that, once you've unlocked some costumes, once you've managed to max out some skill trees, I'm not sure anybody's really going to be playing this game, and I hate to say that. Even as a fan, I do feel like the lifespan of Evil Dead the game is going to be measured in weeks instead of years. Hopefully they have a big roadmap. Hopefully they have a bunch of projects and stuff coming soon, because I do want to stick around. Now that I've already got this game, this is something that feels different than Dead by Daylight. It feels different from Friday the 13th the game. It feels like it's more based on having a good time with your buddies. Even playing as the demon and completely ruining somebody's night is incredibly fun, and that is the true essence of Evil Dead. Okay, so we've heard a lot of good and a little bit of bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Evil Dead the game an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers and a big gigantic thank you to everybody who's liking this video. Yes, I'm going to pressure you to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, you guys rock, go slay some deadites, and please keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.